Hey guys, Ian here. Welcome to my channel and to another video. And uh, you can see a little Agnes sat in the back here, sat patiently waiting to know what I'm going to talk about. And I don't really know what I'm going to talk about. It's going to be one of those sorts of videos. Uh, but uh, today I went to a funeral and the funeral of the mother of one of my closest friends. And it was a wonderful funeral sad yeah but full of celebration and and lightness and the kind of funeral i guess that everyone would want to have and it's it, it caused me to thought to think about because there's lately there's been a lot of uh i don't know kind of deaths in my environment and people talking about you know after death all meeting up again and families being together and uh I'm just waiting for you beyond the veil and, and all of that. And it's caused me to think about what my belief about that is and what my understanding is. And again, you know, I guess I'm going to be raising more questions than I have answers for here. And these are just my views, OK? So um, please don't hold them as gospel. I mean, I wouldn't presume to know you know, the answer for everyone else, but I'm just talking about the answer for myself. Because the question that I find myself faced with, when I think about that, when I think about, you know, like after I die, being with my mother again and my father and, you know, all of the people that have gone on before. The problem I have with that is that mainly it assumes that we live one life and If you believe other than that, if you believe that we live many lives, which isn't a belief that I always had, I did used to believe, believe that I lived one life. When I was in the Christian church, that is what they teach. That is what I, what I strongly believe. But, but now I don't believe that. I believe we go through the experience of many lives because one life really isn't enough to learn to evolve to experience to become all that we are capable of becoming anyway that's what i believe and so if you don't believe that you live only one life how does that getting together with everyone after you've passed through the gate of death work it presents problems logistically i think or more accurately to logic not logistically I suppose you could say, couldn't you, well, if you live many lives, consciousness is not limited and can manifest itself in many forms, in many facets. So you could be present with all of your family in each of those lives. But somehow that doesn't feel, it feels a bit messy to me. It doesn't feel, it doesn't have the simplicity that I, that I, the spiritual simplicity, I guess, and 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 beauty of of mechanism that I come to see exists in all of existence. I mean, some would say it's the beauty of mathematics, that lovely shape to what is happening, that flow, that satisfying. Oh, I don't know. I don't really, really know what I'm trying to say here. But the idea that after death, my consciousness manifests as many facets, each with their family and their friends. No, it feels messy to me. I don't think that's right. So can I then believe that I, for example, will ever know my mother again, who died some years ago, my father, friends who have died, you know, friends who will die in the future, significant people who will come into my life who will die. Can I believe that I will, after I have died or after they have died, ever know companionship with them? And yes, I believe that I will. So how then can I reconcile these two seemingly impossible situations? So I thought about that and that's what's prompted me to make this video and it takes me back to the hermetic axiom 
which you will have heard me mention ad nauseum because it comes out in most of my videos, as above, so below. Now, what does that mean? For those of you who are kind of on the, on the spiritual path, you'll know that. But if someone's watching this for the first time, they might not know what it means. But essentially what it means is that the nature, the ways, the patterns of the above are reflected in existence in the below. So creation, 3D physical manifestation, the nature of personality, the nature of everything that is cosmological, if you like, is a mirror image of a principle that first exists in the above. So what is the above? Well, we could say that the, the above is, is the cosmos, or we could say the above is the spiritual realm, even as high as the nature of the infinite one, the character of divinity, if you like. So as above, so below. Now, if we believe that, then it's obvious that it must work the other way around, that as below, so above. So the things that we see around us in our world, in our experience, we can trace back to a higher spiritual archetype. So then, what can we see about life that could lead us to believe that we can still know and have communion with and companionship with everyone that we have ever known and loved after we and they have died? Is there anything that shows us that in the below? Yes, absolutely there is. Because I thought, you know, and it applies to each and every one of us, I am, I am me, I am Ian, I am the personality that is Ian, I'm the life experiences that have gone into making Ian, myself, what I am today. But before I was Ian, before I came into this world, I was part of two other people. So I came forth from two other people, my mother and my father. And they came forth from two other people and so on. And there, therein is the mystery. In the seemingly simple things of life, we see the deepest mysteries. So in that biological principle, what is the spiritual analogue? What is the high spiritual archetype that applies you? And it's this, isn't it? That consciousness, because this is not, this is not all I am. It's not all you are. This life, this Ian life, is a vehicle and a vessel for the gaining of experience. The I, what I am, my consciousness, my essential nature, that of me which is divine, eternal, everlasting, is not this. This is its avatar, if you like, in the world of physical manifestation. So consciousness, the I consciousness, is one consciousness. Now, we talk a lot, don't we, about God being, when I say God, I don't mean necessarily only the Christian version of God. I mean divinity, whatever divinity is to you. Divinity is unity. That, that God is in all things and all things are in God. So, you see, the consciousness that is my I, that indwells all of my lives is common to all of my lives. And everything that all of my lives has experienced is retained. All of the people I have loved, my knowledge of them, is retained in my, and my experience of them is retained in my I consciousness. And the same will be said for you. And that I consciousness has its source in the unity. So do you see that we, we can know and love and have companionship and communion with everyone that we have ever loved? Not in a way 
that we will be with them individually and that we will be living lives like these lives on the gold paved pavements of heaven because no I don't believe that but I believe that all they were all the sum of all of the lives of all of the people the sum of all of my lives and all of my people essentially exist within one central consciousness <clears throat> excuse me and this is the mystery that that unity that unity consciousness can experience as can exist both as a unity consciousness and a multiplicity consciousness that it can know itself as unity and as multiplicity i don't really know if i've explained myself there but to me it's a perfect explanation and answer of how I never need lose anybody <clears throat> I never need say goodbye to anybody because <clears throat> oh sorry because all that they are and all that I am and all that I ever was and ever will be continues to exist the Ian experience is never lost even though the Ian body and the Ian personality will pass Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's enough for now. I think Agnes is looking a little bit uh, dazed and confused. What's he on about? She's saying. So, great to speak to you guys. Catch you again soon. Bye for now.